There are three elements on Earth that can store and produce enough energy to be our primary fuel sources. One is carbon, which we've dealt with for a long time, and there are obvious problems with carbon, as we've had uh, uh, huge amounts of CO2 release. Another is plutonium, and we'd have to go to a nuclear economy because there's not enough uranium-235, so we'd have to make it from uranium-238, and going to a, a a uh, radioactive economy would certainly be something that, that uh, is disconcerting. And then finally there's hydrogen. And hydrogen is nice because the sun uses hydrogen and that's worked quite well for a while. And if we can make hydrogen from a renewable source like water by splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen and then burning that to form water again, so hydrogen burning to form water, then we'd have this, this beautiful cycle. And so what we need to do is just increase the efficiency of that cycle. So an important thing to think about with green carbon is what kind of science and engineering you need to make this vision a reality. And one of the really um, fascinating and also challenging aspects is the need to think from the nanometer to the kilometer scale. If you're going to make carbon green, you need the chemistry to manipulate carbon and hydrogen in all of its forms. But you also need a really good view of what the environment is, how it's going to respond to particular technologies, and even the economy and the entire social process. And so green carbon really forces that span of thinking. And it's something that Rice is really uniquely positioned to offer with our skills in nanotechnology, sustainability, and of course our policy aspects um, in handling and thinking about energy problems. Green Carbon Center will be very helpful for both our energy supplies and energy security because it will be a combination of domestic uh, fossil fuels and renewable energy combined to make new forms of energy that are domestic and very good for uh, jobs in the United States as well as having our own domestic supplies of energy. And I think to make this work, we need to be thinking on a holistic scale. We need to be thinking on a global scale. And that's not just a global scale in terms of scientific problems, but also in terms of social science issues, understanding how human behavior impacts the environment. Um, it's going to be essential that we engage with everyone from physicists to social scientists to ecologists and geologists. We really need a, um, a very broad multidisciplinary perspective. The Green Carbon Center is part of the Smalley Institute because nanotechnology is a major, has a major role to play in making green carbon happen. Nanotechnology underlies many other technologies in terms, in terms of making them better, making them a lot better by revolutionary advancements in, in the field of nanotechnology. And green carbon is all about making uh, carbon work for us instead of against us. And that means by transforming it, by uh, working to form chemicals from it, et cetera. And nanotechnology is the way that you make catalysts so much better. And the catalysts are going to be critical to, to how we handle green carbon. Oil, gas, and coal all play an important part because if we try to displace any one of those, we put so many people out of work that it's politically untenable to consider that process. Coal can go through a process, a well-known process, where we can make syngas, hydrogen, and carbon monoxide and use that to make uh, small molecules that are used in polymerization reactions. Natural gas can be used in steam methane reforming to generate hydrogen and CO2 and then the CO2 reduced back to methanol and formaldehyde using regenerated hydrogen from water that's, that's made by a, 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 a sunlight or wind. And then, then we have to use oil for making building materials, for making products that we want to use. So each one of those is an important component for the future. And we don't want to get rid of any of those. We want to exploit all of them and use them to their fullest, but without using our atmosphere as a waste dump. So 85% of our country's um, energy comes from fossil fuels. And Houston is the world capital of the industry that makes and produces and transports those fossil fuels to all of us. So we are in a really unique position as the leading university in Texas to really transform that industry, to develop it in a green way, to make it sustainable, and to teach people that just because it's carbon doesn't mean that it has an environmental consequence, but it in fact can help us achieve a renewable energy economy of the future.